conflict has spread all over the surface of Kerbin, and now it has reached its atmosphere. It is only a matter of time before the conflict spreads even to the Mun. This is Echo 3, and let's continue discussing the Cold War. Communist forces are definitely up to something on the surface of the Mun. The Central Kerbin Alliance Network has tasked their space program to find out exactly what the communists are up to. The goal for this particular mission is to investigate the scientific data around the communist landing site. It is not believed that the communists have landed any personnel on the Mun's surface yet. However, they seem to be constructing something that resembles a base Perhaps they were setting something up for future operations. The Central Kerbin Alliance Network needs to get to the bottom of this. The space program's lead defense contractor, Didi Kerman, will head up this mission, while lead scientist, Bob Kerman, will assist. This mission marks only the second time that the Alliance Network has attempted to land crew onto the Mun's surface. The first time was done under entirely peaceful circumstances. This time, however, it is not known how peaceful things will go. The communist cannot be trusted. Bob is an experienced Kerbal knot who took part in the first Mun landing. Didi is less experienced in matters of spaceflight. He is, however, a very experienced combat pilot. As conflict on the Mun is expected to continue, his expertise will be needed here. There's an odd yet seemingly naturally occurring structure on the rim of this large crater. And yet, there are also some strange readings coming from this area. It appears to be the beginnings of a communist base. Didi is attempting to land his craft right in the vicinity of the communist activity. While Didi is excellent at landing airplanes, he is less experienced with landing rockets. Didi thinks he can do some barrel rolls to get the craft a little bit closer to the communist base. Didi and Bob have discovered some kind of communist habitation module. This was probably landed here as the communists are anticipating bringing crew sometime in the future. The communists have been very secretive with their space program, so it's going to be very difficult to ascertain what their true intentions really are. But Bob is going to get out and take some different scientific readings from this area. He's attempting to investigate what exactly is going on here. Why did the communists choose this as their landing site? Maybe Didi can get some insight. He's going to go over and do the all-important flag planting. And of course, he is leaving a special message for the communists in case they ever arrive here. Didi and Bob decide to take a moment to reflect upon the gravity of this situation, as they are only the second mission ever to set boots on the surface of the Mun, and to take a picture to make a postcard to send to the communists. Bob is curious if the communists decided to lock up their capsule. They did not. They left some kind of golfing equipment in here. Well, that's interesting. Bob decides that he shall take that back home with him. It's unclear exactly how much scientific data one could gain from hitting golf balls on the Mun, but it does seem like it would be pretty fun. Maybe the capitalists should set up some kind of golf course here. Didi and Bob quickly duck into their craft as they see some kind of foreign craft coming towards them. It looks like some kind of communist landing craft. They're here. That was quicker than expected. It's the famed communist Kerbal Knot, Yuri Kerman. He was their first pilot to ever achieve orbit around Kerbin. He seems less than pleased that the Central Kerbin Alliance Network has landed right next to his capsule. As he sets up the communist flag, he leaves a message for Bob and Didi in the capsule. He tells them that they need to watch their backs... And with those words of ill will, he decides to go ahead and continue on with his mission and enter into his base. It is likely the communists will be even less welcoming 
the next time they encounter Central Kerbin Alliance Network personnel on the MUN. With their mission complete, Bob and Dee Dee take off and head for home. They've been able to gather a wealth of scientific data from around the MUN and on its surface. Now they need to bring all of this information back home. It is now confirmed that the communists are definitely operating on the MUN. However, their intentions still remain unclear. But the message is clear. Central Kerbin Alliance personnel need to watch their backs the next time they're on the MUN. This means that in addition to scientific equipment, MUN missions will need to be armed. The Kerbals at the Research and Development Facility say that all the new scientific data that Bob and Dee Dee brought back will help them develop even more technologies that will push Kerbal kind further into the future. Communist drones operating on the surface of the MUN have attacked and stranded a couple Alliance personnel. A rescue mission is hastily being concocted. In addition to needing to recover the stranded Kerbals, this craft will also need to be able to fend off whatever the Communists throw at it. So not only does this craft need to be rugged enough to drive across large swaths of the MUN surface, it needs to be able to handle whatever kind of weapons the Communists may try shooting at it. Engineers are currently thinking that lots of redundant parts, such as extra wheels and batteries, should help this thing withstand the harsh terrain and bullets. And this craft will be able to pack its own punch. Engineers are putting a 30 millimeter cannon on top of this thing. It should be able to hold its own against whatever the communists have. It looks like the engineers have developed a pretty capable rover. The next task will be trying to get this thing all the way from Kerbin to the surface of the MUN. The thinking is that a rocket will carry this slung underneath with its engines mounted on the side. The pilot will first need to land the rover, then decouple the return craft from the rover and land it separately. This all sounds rather complicated, but military MUN rescue missions are never easy. This craft and rover should have sufficient delta V to go from low Kerbin orbit to the surface of the MUN and get all three Kerbals back home safely. Engineers now need to construct the rest of the rocket that will be able to put this into low Kerbin orbit. A small stage with a high vacuum specific impulse engine, like the Poodle, should be able to help finish the circularization burn. The lower stage is all about power, trying to get the craft up high enough and fast enough so that the upper stage can finish the job and circularize the craft around Kerbin. The Central Kerbin Alliance Network is still very limited in its first stage engines. The skipper is one of the best that they have, but it is not powerful enough to push this first stage. Six solid rocket motors will be needed to help give this craft a high enough thrust to weight ratio to get off the pad. The skipper isn't quite powerful enough, but the Central Kerbin Alliance Network does have another first stage engine that should do very well. It's called the Bobcat. Perhaps two Bobcats will be sufficient for this craft. And if you watch carefully, you can see the little trick I did to clip the two Bobcat engines together. And Dee Dee Kerbin is heading back to the MUN. But this time, he's there to rescue those who've been attacked by the communists. His military experience may be a deciding factor in this mission. The first stage propels the craft up to 1600 meters per second and over 47 kilometers in altitude. As the first stage engines cut out, the payload fairing deploys and the second stage fires. The second stage has a much lower thrust to weight ratio. However, it is sufficient to get the craft up to orbital velocity. Once the craft reaches a stable orbit, Didi is able to fire his engines and accelerate out to the MUN sphere of influence. Once Didi reaches the MUN, he will maneuver his craft to land somewhat close to the first stranded Kerbal. Although Dee Dee will need to take care not to land too close to any of the communist forces. The armed rover will be used for the actual rescue. Dee Dee is being extra cautious as he comes in for his landing. Although he is using a lot of extra Delta V to come in safely and his return budget might be kind of tight. The rover travels over to the first stranded Kerbal. So far, no contact with any of the communists. The other stranded Kerbal is on the south side of this crater. There are a couple communist rovers blocking the way. 
the high mounted 30 millimeter cannon is able to take aim over top of this ridge line, line up with its first target, fire a burst, and the first rover's down. Now there's just one more patrolling this area. These are probably the same rovers that stranded these Kerbals in the first place. Need to watch out for that second rover. There it is in the distance. Just need to line up the cannon to get a shot off. By keeping the rover angled, hopefully it will have a better chance of deflecting incoming rounds. The rescue craft has taken a few hits, but so far there's been no critical damage. After another burst from the cannon, the enemy rover is destroyed. There doesn't appear to be any more enemy forces in the area. It should be safe to complete the rescue. The SOS beacon is coming from inside this small crater just up ahead. The Central Kerbin Alliance Network rover did take a few hits, but so far it's held up well to what the communist forces have thrown at it. The hard part may be just trying to get inside the rover. With the two stranded Kerbals inside the rescue rover, it's time to take them back to the return craft. Didi has been waiting in the rocket where he has been remotely controlling the rescue drone. Now it's time to transfer the crew over to the return craft and hopefully gather a little bit of science from this mission as well. It looks like this scientist Kerbal Knot needs to practice a little bit more with his EVA flying. Didi used too much fuel on his landing and now his return craft is left with very little Delta V. So after burning all of his fuel, Didi has to get out and push the craft the rest of the way home. This results in a periapsis that is very high in Kerbin's atmosphere, so multiple aerobraking passes are needed to bring this thing back down to the surface. And this aerobraking pass took the crew right over the Communist Space Center. While this mission faced many challenges, the Central Kerbin Alliance Network was able to overcome them all. I am Echo 3, and thanks for joining me to discuss the Cold War. I will see you next time.